We've had some fun. We've had some laughs. But it's time to get serious. We've had nice reviews of Leth, Drunken Sailor, Francis Scanner, Goose IPA. Absolute belters. But I want to take it up a notch. I want to get that bit more serious with this channel. Let's review the tenants. Well, hello there, perfect drafters. What a week. What a week it's been. <laughs> I don't think since I've owned the machine, there has been such a controversial, such an eventful, such a fun, and yet such a roller coaster of a week. Really has, really has. And what are the reasons for that? One of the reasons was a keg release. A keg release this last Monday of Tenants. We did think on the Friday before it was gonna be released. I think I even said it in my Fruity video. But no, it was put off for taste testing or whatever it was, uh, last minute quality checks. So over that weekend, the momentum, the build up, the excitement, the anticipation was just immense. The Perfect Draft Keg Tips group was going mad. It was going off the scale. Post after post of basically people talking about the possibility of tenants. And there was Elite Beer Hawk website image. I think it was also in the Google cache and stuff like that. People saying, nah, you're fake this. I mean, that, that would have been a good fake. But basically it wasn't, you know, it was the page that was to come. Then we saw it popping up on the Monday before the five o'clock release. People were obviously excited about it, but also people were still not believing it. They were like, it still ain't gonna happen. Still ain't gonna happen. Can't happen. Well, it did. It's on the perfect draft. And for whatever reason, this beer has totally polarized opinion. So I put out a message just on my YouTube channel. So wasn't gonna hit that many people. But I think it's had something like 70 odd comments now. And those comments from the very first two were black and white. It was, this stuff is amazing. To, this stuff tastes like pond algae. Yeah, it got that bad. It really does polarise opinion. And I think that's why there was so much controversy, so many differences of opinion in that Facebook group and in many other Facebook groups as well. So I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this belter. One of the things that's come out is that the difference between tenants within a can compared to on draft is significant. So I've got myself some tinnies, I'm gonna crack into one and I'm gonna compare it. Fair enough, isn't it? Let's have a look. Now I'm just gonna say from the start, I've never had tenants before, never had it. Never had it off draft, Never had it out of a can, never had it out of a bottle, not had it. And to get those cans was a challenge. It was, I don't know if the excitement and the buildup of it coming on the perfect draft has made people go, hmm, tenants is a thing and start buying it up everywhere. But I don't think where I live, it's actually so easy to get hold of anyway. It wasn't in Tesco's, it wasn't in Home Bargains, it wasn't in Morrison's. Then I went to B&M. I went to B&M and the beer aisle for a start had changed. So that done me. I looked up above, said beer, so I didn't, it said alcohol. Went down that aisle, wasn't there. Went to the end, there was the beer. So in the right section. And sitting there on a shelf was some tenants. Very, very fortunate. The last pack of tenants, no less. Let me grab it out the fridge. So here's my tinnies and yeah, you might be thinking, Baldy, you've ripped one off and tasted it already. You'd be wrong. Now this was the last pack on the shelves in B&M. And some thieving blighter had had one. I was concerned that they're not gonna sell it to me, 
But I took it up to the counter anyway, because basically I only wanted one can really, just for comparison purposes. Took it up to the till, said, don't know if you've noticed that, but there's a little fella missing there. She looked at me, obviously thinking, what do you want me to do about that? And I said, well, I don't mind paying for four, just whack them through, because they are 3 99 I think she understood that by the look in my eye, it was like, I am paying for four tins when I'm getting three. She asked the bloke, she goes, what can we do here? Can we offer some monies off? I was kind of thinking, well, really, you should. You know, it doesn't take that much figuring out, but it, it did. So 3 99 they um, did the generous offer of 2 99 Took a while. But basically, got the three cans, so I'll be whipping one of those off, pouring it out, and tasting that alongside the keg. So, bit of a comparison there. Not sure if it's a good sign or a bad sign that one of those has been stolen. So, they did sell out pretty quick as well. I mean, this proper crashed the Beer Hawk website. It was due out at five o'clock. There was a few leaks throughout the day. I think on the tenant's Twitter, it said five o'clock, go on and have a look. So obviously a lot of people were all ramming on there at once. It broke the website, it did for me. It took me an hour and a half, an hour and a half to get a keg of tenants. I don't think there was another time when that happened. And the other keg release of this year, La Trap, you can't get two more opposite ends of the spectrum type of kegs. But La Trap was released this month. That didn't crash the site, that didn't crash the site. Now rumor has it, they had four tankards of this stuff for the initial orders. So they must have been thinking, we're gonna be all right here, we're gonna be fine. Now that's like 20,000 kegs. 20,000 kegs, boom, gone. And like I say, there really has been a total difference of opinion on this. It's a little bit like the perfect draft has gone out and had a soiree with a lady of the night because some people are saying, you know, that's damaged its reputation, and it? That's tarnished its brand. And there's others that are saying, fair play, good work, perfect draft. Some people feel this is of the ilk of a Carling or a Foster's, and it's opening the perfect draft up to the masses. Well, yeah, it is. Personally, and this is just my opinion, don't shoot me down, I think that's a good thing. I think variety is the spice of life. And let's all have some of that spice. Let's have a bit. If this opens it up to even more breweries, good stuff. The more this machine is popular, more breweries are gonna come on, the less chance there is of this machine getting discontinued at any point, and therefore, home drafting is at our fingertips. So I think it's a good thing. If you don't like the keg, don't buy it. There is a lot of good quality kegs out there that you can get your lips around, so, go for those. Now also, for me, I've come from being very much like a, a Foster's drinker and a Carlin drinker. Me, I'm, you know, I'm not a beer connoisseur. This machine has made me appreciate some really, really good beers. And I'd say it has changed my taste. I have come from being a Foster's and a Carlin type drinker. Now given the choice, I would pick a Crew Republic Drunken Sailor over a Foster's any day of the week. I'd have a La Trap over a Carlin. Yes, I would. But there are times, and I've gone on about this in a lot of my different videos, there are times and scenarios when a good, nice, refreshing lager just absolutely hits the spot. It's an absolute belter. At the moment, I'm sure many of you are aware that I'm building a pub in the garden, and that's taking a fair bit of DIY, a fair bit of labor. You know, building those foundations and stuff like that text it out of you. And there's nothing better than a nice, cold, refreshing lager when you've been doing something like that. I don't want a sipper. I don't want a La Trap after firing down a load of concrete. Don't want it. But of an evening, if I want to sit down and really appreciate the taste of a beer, give me a La Trap. Give me a Crew Republic Drunken Sailor. Give me it. So that's what I think there is around that whole difference of opinion around tenants. And one other good thing about this coming on to the perfect draft is some of the other drinks that this brewery offers. 
let's just have a quick look. Now, we've been talking about Cider on the Perfect Draft for a long, long time. Will Magnus come on there? Will that Orchard Pig come on there? Could be. Could be. Could sort it out. Now, that would be a belt, wouldn't it? And some of the others there, I haven't tried a lot of these, got to be honest, but there's some good ones. There's some good ones. A lot of people are saying that some good beers from this brewery. So, again, expanding that choice. And it's in Scotland. You know, this is from the Tenants Caledonian Brewery. And, you know, with the whole Brexit issues, maybe that's a good thing. I've heard they're getting another restock of this already. Therefore, beer in stock, that's got to be a winner. I'm going to give it a blast. I'm going to compare the can against the keg. I haven't got Tenants glasses, but I have got two Goose Island glasses that are identical. So I'll be putting the can in one and the keg in another. Then I'll fire into some snackage. So... Without further, let's have a look at that keg. Let's pour out a tinny. Let's do the pour on the perfect draft. Let's have a look at them. And let's taste some tenants, people. Let's taste some tenants. So there it is, the big red tea. A sight that many people didn't think they'd see, but there it is, there it is. 4%, 4%, so very much a session beer that we're talking about here ordered it straight away on the monday and it's got until september so a good six months on that you know fair play good stuff some people are saying about the price we're looking at 31 pound 50 and yeah when you consider how much you paid for those tinnies in b&m it is a bit but it might be one of those kegs that beer hawk can offer a bit of discount on from time to time always having stock offer a good discount, you know, that might actually attract, again, more sales for Beer Hawk, and also a winner for us, if it's good. Let's do the pour. Okay, so identical Goose Island nucleated glasses, one for the tinny, just there, one for the perfect draft. I'm gonna go in for the perfect draft first, so here we go, let's pour this tenants. go so i mean here's the first pour out of it a little bit lively you may have noticed it's on six degrees it's on six degrees because it's come straight out of that sub cold straight into this here i think six degrees is fine probably a reason why it is also a little bit heavy there but the tin's also done the same so that tin will be the same temperature i'm trying to be as fair as possible people I'm trying to be as fair as possible so there's the head on that. Let's pop you just there. And I think you can see there some nice bubs, some good bubs. I'm gonna crack into this. There we go. Hey, wastage. So there we go. That's out of a can. You kind of do expect more carbonation out of a can and you can see there is, you know, but look at the head. Look at the head. Yeah, more carbonation from that can, definitely. The head, nah. And actually the clarity of the can, far more, whereas there is a haziness with the perfect draft pour. Right, let's bring them both in. First off, perfect draft. Okay, so here's the perfect draft. Look, got that clinginess to the top, which you expect on that kind of draft beer. Got some bobs. But, you know, I mean, that's that's what you'd expect from kind of pub bobs, wouldn't you? It's about right. It's about right. So there we go. Sorry it's not in the, uh, the big red tea glass, but such is life. And then, you know, there was never a head to it, really. This is the can. A lot of carbonation there. No head at all, really. Um, and I gave it a chance. Let's give it a sup. Pretty easy to keep track of which is which. 
but as you can, that's your perfect draft. So, yeah, I mean, even now, fantastic carbonation on that can. It really is. Whereas this has just got a nice, gentle, slow rising of the bulbs. That's what it's got. Right, there's the two. <sighs> Let's get in. Let's get in, people. I'm intrigued. Not going to do no sniffing. It's not a drink to sniff. But what shall I go for first? I'm going to go for cannage. I'm going to go for cannage first. I have got, because this is just holding its head lovely, really is. I have got a little bit of water. I am being very connoisseur-like, I think, for the very first time. And it's with a tenants. I'm going to cleanse the palate. Let's get stuck into this can first. Cheers. It's not awful. It's not awful. It's not great. I mean, you've got to liken that to Carlin. You really have. And maybe it is the cannage. There is a bit of a more metallic taste to it, definitely. I actually can't remember the last time I had a can of lager. I can't. But thinking back to a Foster's, to a Carlin, because I've never had a Tenants before, it's not amazingly different to that. Yeah. I mean, good carbonation, very clear, incredibly clear. But, yeah, it is what it is. And don't get me wrong, if I'm out at a barbecue and I'm thirsty and someone goes, you've either got some Kiora or a can of Tenants, I'm going to have the can of tents. Let's taste, though, what it's like off the perfect draft. Bit of a swill of the mouth. Mmm. Lovely clarity. And, right, so the head has obviously gone a little bit there. Still some bubs, nicely, slowly rising. And a good clingage to the top of the glass, like you'd expect with a pub style pint off draft. Right, here we go. It's a big one. I feel pressure. I do feel pressure, but I'm still going to be honest. Let's get in. Cheers, perfect drafters. Yeah. There's a big difference. There is a big difference there. And I know a lot of people will go, yeah, right, of course. You're saying it again, Baldy. Just taking the perfect draft side. No, there is. There is. That metallic kind of taste to it that's within that tin, it's not great. This, it's there slightly, that kind of, I'm going to call it a tenant's twang. It's there slightly, but it doesn't get you afterwards. It feels a bit fuller in the mouth, definitely. I think that slightly lesser carbonation makes it that little bit less gassy and almost easier and smoother to drink. That's not bad. That isn't bad. It's certainly not pond algae. I certainly wouldn't rather drink my bath water I certainly wouldn't rather drink, I'm not going to go into some of the other things that people have said, because they're quite blatantly not true. That's not a bad drink. Now, if I'm kind of comparing that to other beers on the perfect draft, other lagers, that's where we've got to contemplate things. That's where we've really got to think. But that, I tell you, that, if you're having a barbecue or something like that and you've got a very big mix of people when that can happen again, that's going to please the vast majority. You know, if you've got that and you've got a load of brew dog mixed cases in and stuff like that, you know, you're going to please the crafties 
and you're going to please people that want to swill a refreshing lager. So that, that has got a time and a place on the perfect draft for me. It has. Where would I sit it amongst the other kegs, the other lagers on the perfect draft? Right. It's no Spaten. It's not a Spaten. Spaten's up there, and that I gave that an eight before. I think I gave Spaten Oktoberfest and Lowenbrow Oktoberfest a nine. Um, that again, it's it's way above this. But then so's their prices. Recently, I've had the Pilsners of the Jupiler and the Hertog. Again, both of those I would put above this. They're both very nice lagers. Now, where I think I would sit it is next. Alongside, and some people may say, no, nah, you're wrong with this, Baldy. You've got to be wrong. But I would put it alongside, ironically, in this glass. And maybe that's what's doing it, make, making me think of it. But alongside the Golden Goose Lager, that's where I'd sit this alongside. I don't think it's massively different to that. Golden Goose Lager's got a little bit more of a, a kick to it. In terms of refreshingness and an easy, nice drinking lager, that's where I'm putting it, alongside that. I can only think the people that are saying this really shouldn't come to the perfect draft are people that haven't actually tried this on draft. Or they have, and they didn't like it. Because some people, you know, you just don't like it. Some things you just don't like. Personally, when I was just drinking, like, you know, Foster's and Carlin, uh, Carlin Premier, Beck's Veer, things like that in pubs, I would air for a Beck's Veer and I would air for a Foster's. I just didn't like Carlin. But look at it. I mean, it sells by the absolute bucket load. It isn't a bad lager. It can't be a bad lager, otherwise that many people wouldn't buy it. Look, if that's what they want to drink, let them drink it. And I find this a nice, acceptable, refreshing beer on the perfect draft. I think it's all right. I think it's all right. Like I say, it isn't going to blow your socks off. It ain't. But it's an easy drinking one. It's an easy drinker. It's refreshing. And it wasn't even on the three degrees. I had that set to six degrees so that it was straight out of the sub cold, exactly the same from the tin as on the perfect draft in terms of temperature. But look, look how that's going down. The legs, got legs on the glass. Let's have a look at that. I mean, the speed, it's like it's, well, it's fast. It's fast. Yeah. This one looks like a sloth compared to this. Anyway, night and day. If you've had a can of tenants before and think, I'm not trying that on the perfect draft, still, give it a blast. I think it's worth a go. Right, so I was in B&M and I wanted to get something a little bit Scottish just to compliment it. I just thought that's what I should do. So I don't know how popular these are in Scotland, but they are of Scotland. Mac is of Scotland. Crispy bacon. Now I do like bacon flavour. These are gently cooked to perfection, apparently. Nice big bag. I haven't got small hands. Got some people on the back saying, yeah, made in Scotland with the best varieties of crisping potatoes. It's good, isn't it? Mac is thick cut potato crisps are made in Perthshire, Scotland by our award-winning family business, Mac is at Taypac. Not going to read the rest. I'm going to get stuck in. Let's give them a whiff. Oh, yeah, they smell all right. The looking, as I'm looking in the bag, they're looking a little bit like Brannigan's. Can you remember Brannigan's? I think they were belters. But the packets, I don't think you get big packs of Brannigan's, and you should have been able to. Anyway, they're not Brannigan's. Let's have a look at the crisp. Look at them. Yeah, they do look like they're cooked a little bit different. Cheers. Well, I don't know why I'm saying cheers for a crisp. Let's get stuck in. Mmm. There's nothing wrong with them. Let's go for a double crunch. Very good. They have not macked me off. Mackies have not macked me off. 
They're nice. Good bear snack. Good bear snack because nice little bit of dry edge of the mouth. I reckon they're gonna go well with this tenants. They are very similar in texture to Brannigan's if you've ever had them. A little bit different to a, they're not like a kettle chip. Not well, they're not. They're not kettle chips. Um, they're very different to a um, you know a Walkers. Yeah. No, they're good. Go well with that. Nice. So, what am I going to give it? What's Baldy going to give this little baby? Well, I said earlier about the spading, but I think it's below that. I gave it eight for the spade, which is a good, very respectable score. Very respectable. I'm going to give this a seven. I'm going to give it a seven. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Like I say, I think there are better kegs, obviously, on the perfect draft in terms of lagers. I am now more of an IPA drinker myself. But in terms of this beer, I would say it's very nice, very refreshing. The right scenario where you want a session lager, that's not going to do you any wrongs whatsoever. I'm going to quite easily finish that keg. No problems there. Good, refreshing drink. I think that sums it up, really. I mean, it's not going to be their marketing strap line. Good, refreshing drink. I don't know what it is. I don't know what their strap line is. It's got its time and its place. And it's got its position now, I think, on the perfect draft. Let's see what comes of the future. I mean, I don't think it knows what trouble it caused. <whistles> huh? Closing down groups and all sorts. I'm giving that a seven. And I'm going to give them the same score. Because they're pleasant. They're nice. Nothing wrong with them. Good combo. So alongside the tenants, I went in for a three-pack. So I went also for a Club Tropica and also a Bex Gold. So I know they're two biggies and it'll be interesting to compare the Bex Gold to this. You know, where does that slot in amongst the uh, Golden Goose Lager, amongst the Oktoberfests, etc. Anyway, if you want to see that Bex Gold review and you want to see that Club Tropica review, please subscribe, give this video a like, even if you hate the fact that I've liked the tenants, go on, give it a like. Comment below, what did you think? There's been enough comments on tenants to last a lifetime, but go on, give us another one below. What do you think to it? Have you had yours yet? It may well be back in stock soon, so check it out. But for now, perfect drafters. After an explosive week, have an absolute belter of a weekend. Have a good one. Hope the sun shines. Hope you have a refreshing drink, whatever that may be, and you enjoy it. So cheers, Perfect Drafters. Cheers. Cheers.